Now let's look at um, Chinese city um, after, you know, during the second millennium CE, basically, from the Liao Dynasty to the Qing Dynasty. And we will focus on the city um, that eventually has become Beijing. Um, the city of Beijing had been known for many different names. <clears throat> for example, in the Liao Dynasty, it was known as Nanjing, which is kind of confusing because today there is another city called Nanjing. But <clears throat> You know, in the 10th century to 12th century, Beijing is called Nanjing. Beijing means northern capital, and Nanjing means southern cap capital. How come it is known as both northern capital and southern capital? Well, that is because for the Liao Empire, Beijing is in the south of their territory. So um, today it's called the Northern Capital, but in the 10th century to 12th century, it's called the Southern Capital. Because of course, this is the Liao territory, Liao Empire, and of course, that is Southern Capital. <clears throat> and uh, in the Jin Empire Dynasty, from the 12th century to 13th century, Beijing is known as Zhongdu, which means middle capital. And that is because the, the Jin had occupied Yellow River, entire Yellow River, and Beijing is in the middle of their empire. They had their southern capital, they had their northern capital, they had their western capital, they also had their eastern capital. All right, so... Um, during the Jin Dynasty, it's called the Middle Capital, Zhongdu. And then the Yuan, <coughs> the Mongols, conquered everyone. So, and they also chose Beijing as their imperial capital. And they call it Dadu. Dadu simply means the Great Capital. So that is during the Yuan Dynasty, the dynasty we just looked at. So Beijing became known as great, the great capital, Dadu. Uh, but all those three <coughs> previous regimes that had chosen Beijing as their capital were previously nomads, nomadic people, and eventually became settled in China. And Beijing was a preferable location because it is at the border of the nomadic and the settled part of today's China. So it's very close. The Great Wall was just there along that line. So to the north is the um, the uh, <coughs> kind of animal husbandry of the nomads, and to the south was the um, agriculture of the um, settled farmers. So Beijing became, start to become prominent um, since the Liao Dynasty, since the Song and the Liao period, since basically the beginning of the second millennium, because of that nomadic influence on Chinese culture. And uh, <clears throat> um, see. so Beijing was also kind of uh, described by Marco Polo. Um, this is a page from the travels of Marco Polo. 
So he he praised the Beijing, the grandness and the uh, kind of Mongol palaces of the Great Khan in Beijing, and that was the city visited by Marco Polo. And、uh, Beijing became known as Beijing since the Ming Dynasty. So it was only since the Ming Dynasty. Actually, there was a specific date. Only since fourteen fourteen o seven, it became known as Beijing. Because even before that, even during the Ming Dynasty, before fourteen o seven, the capital is in the south. Here. And that city is called Nanjing, the southern capital. So,、um, the third emperor of Ming Dynasty relocated their capital to Beijing, and named it Beijing, the northern capital, only since the、um, early fifteenth century. So, since then, Beijing became more、um, known as Beijing. Um, in the seventeenth century, another nomadic group、um, became kind of powerful and influential、uh, from northern part of China, from the Manchuria region, and that was the、uh, rise of the Manchus. Eventually, they conquered China and founded the Qing Dynasty, and.、Uh, They also settled their capital in Beijing, naturally, because Beijing, in that case, was closer to their Manchurian homeland, and it is also kind of a looking south to dominate、um, the traditional Chinese territory. So this is the、uh, map of the the Qing Dynasty, showing the areas of the、um, you know China proper. The Manchuria, the Inner Mongolia region, the Outer Mongolia region, the、um, the Uyghur Muslim region, and Tibet.、Right. So,、uh, so this is the、uh, kind of a five major cultural areas of the、um, Qing Dynasty, Qing Dynasty China, namely you know China Manchuria. Mongolia, Xinjiang,、um, or the Muslim region, and Tibet. So Beijing,、um, in that under that situation, is located in the place where it is not kind of too far from 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 those from those areas. Well, it's pretty far from Tibet. But at least it is kind of close to Manchuria, close to Mongolia, and close to China. You know, Xinjiang and Tibet、um, are far away anyway.、Uh, in any case, no matter where you locate the capital, it is you know pretty pretty far. <coughs> so Beijing became prominent、um, uh, since the tenth、uh, century, but uh, um, as an As a capital for a unified empire in China, that was only starting with the、uh, Yuan Dynasty.、Um, start start with the Mongol Mongols, that Beijing became a national capital of a unified China. So although those all those previous dynasties. Found their capital in Beijing. Their location are not exactly the same, right? Just like in the Xi'an area, the city known as Chang'an from the Zhou Dynasty is very different from the Chang'an of Han Dynasty, and is very different from the Chang'an from the Tang Dynasty. So there are many different Chang'an city、um, in the same Xi'an area. But they are totally different cities, and、uh, the the reason for that is 
the notorious Chinese tradition of destroying and burning capitals of previous dynasties when the new son of heaven ascend to throne. So here we are using the Mingqing historic city of Beijing as a framework, right? So this, this is the Ming and the Qing dynasty Beijing. And we are using that as a reference for the location of earlier Beijings. So this is the city and the location of the Liao southern capital. So that is the Liao Nanjing. And this, this one is the Jin capital uh, of Zhongdu. The, the middle capital, also known as Yanjing. Um, so there are many different names for the same same city. So that is the uh, the Jin Dynasty Beijing, known as Yanjing or Zhongdu. Uh, yeah, first known as Yanjing and then later known as Zhongdu. That's basically the same same thing. The same same location and the same building. And that is the location, that one, solid line. That is the Yuan capital Dadu. That one. And then the Ming and the Qing dynasty Beijing uh, has been present in all the three maps. Right? So <clears throat> um, it's in the same area and but kind of overlapping with one another and the reason for that is because you know when the Jurchen Jin captured Beijing they destroy um, the Liao capital and build their own and when the Mongols conquered the Jurchen Jin they destroy that capital and build their own um, on the same pretty much the same location and uh, when the Ming Chinese conquered the Mongols in the um, late 14th century, they also burned the palace of the Mongols and built their own new versions of Beijing. And uh, the only ex ex uh, exception was the Manchu, Qing, when they conquered Beijing in the 17th century, they didn't burn the Ming capital. They simply adopted it and live in the pre previous Ming palaces. So we are fortunate to have a you know, 600 year old Beijing. If the Qing rulers, if the Manchu rulers were like the previous Chinese rulers, um, you know, burning the palace of previous dynasty, we would only have a Beijing, um, uh, we, we would only have a forbidden city from the 17th century. Um, instead of, you know, now we have one from the 15th century. So the Manchus didn't do that probably because, you know, <clears throat> um, they came to conquer China as a rescuer um, because the Ming was formally toppled by the peasant rebellion um, by a guy whose name is Li Zicheng and uh, the last Ming emperor committed suicide um, not because of the invading Manchus but because of the peasant uprising um, you know it was collapsed by uh, by its own people, not not by the Manchus. So the Manchus probably didn't feel, feel feel that kind of burden. And besides, the Manchus in the 17th century were not sinicized. They probably didn't have that kind of um, kind of ideological burden to destroy the spirit of the previous dynasty anyway. Um, Precise reason is 
hard to pin down, but the reality is the Manchus didn't burn the palace of previous dynasty. Rather, they just comfortably lived, you know, adopted、um, the forbidden city from the Ming dynasty, and、uh, lived there and ruled China for about three hundred years.、Um, since the <coughs> the seventeenth century. So that is the Beijing that we are going to look at in this lecture.、Um, there was not much to see、um, for the the Liao, Nanjing, and、uh, Jin Zhongdu,、uh, but we will start with the Yuan Dynasty capital Dadu, and、uh, which had been, you know,、um, learned. Through both historical records and archaeological excavation, so we know the Yuan Dynasty, Beijing, known as Dadu,、um, a, a little bit better, and, and of course, you know, the Mingqing Beijing、um, had been preserved,、um, not very well, but you know, preserved somehow, and、uh, at least the, the Forbidden City、um, and a lot of the. Names of the sites had survived, so we know that even better, of course, than the Yuan Dynasty Dadu. So that is something we will focus on in this lecture.、Uh, we will look at the Yuan Dynasty Beijing and the Mingqing、uh, historic city of Beijing. So thank you. We will,、um, you know, we we stop here and、um, we will pick up next time. Thank you.